Good evening. Today's uh, Wednesday night, leading on to when it's pre-recording this year for Thursday evening. I'd like to, first of all, before going to the actual shear, uh, join with the Kahal Hashluchim and Chabad around the world in condolences to family Patlarsky on the uh, passing of Reb Meshal Shalom, who was uh, support yes. to so many Shluchim and indeed very close to my late father in law Shalom. Very, uh, he helped him out in various times of very challenging, challenging times in a personal way. So, he's a great baruch, and uh, yes, that the polis, the tremendous polis which he did during his lifetime, will certainly have a polanim shech as an ongoing effect. Yeah. So, we have. Our first question, which I wanted to discuss with you, is actually uh, understanding, appreciating a ha'ara of the Rebbe in a mimer. And um, I said by the Havarenga no Shabbos, towards the end of Soita, it talks about Misha Mesa Bakiva Botla Kovid Hatera. Shahir Dairish Tili Tilan Shahaloch, and I'll call Kites or Kites Tili Tilan Shahalochus. But every you found in every nuance in Tyra it became significant. And he showed uh, when we learned Sikhas, Rashi Sikhas with the Rebbe. So you see how every detail of a Rashi, every extra vov, etc., becomes significant. We'll see uh, something significant in, in the next discussion. But meanwhile, here's a mimer, which the Rebbe said it was. We learned it between Michael and Meir a couple of weeks ago. Nachtale Lorento taught the Meimer. This is a Meimer, like Beimer Meimer, which talks about uh, when there was a shortage of rain, a drought in Israel, and it turned to Rabbi Shimba Yochai. And uh, instead of prayer, he said a Torah, he said a beer on the Possek, and rain came down. And the famous Discussion how he achieved rain through Torah rather than through through uh, Tefillah. Okay. Meanwhile, this is associated with Rabbi Yossi. And Now, this piece of the Mimer talks about what's the significance of Rabbi Yossi, because Rabbi Yossi is related to Malchus. Yossi is Gematria eighty six. That's the Gematria of Shem Malikim, seen of Malchus. And he goes further that Gematria is lower than the uh, main thing itself. So it's a lower madrega. Gematria only bear gematria like him. And their message is bringing from higher to lower, from an exalted level, etc., et to bring down to Bia. So the message so far is that Rebyoisi figures in the process of bringing from higher to lower. And then he says the following Vazehu Oimrai Shevas Achim Gamyocha, which is Rebyoisi is quoting. Which Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai explained, Achim Gam, the, the emphasis on Achim Gam, and the words Achim Gam again allude to the lower elements of Bia, which are lower than the levels of Atzimus. And he adds these words, Achim vegamin miutin. The word Ach and the word Gam is to exclude. Which means to minimize, reduce, going from Bia, from Amatsilos down to from Marcos Amatsilos down to Bia. I looked at this lotion, and it, it, it's in my mind. I was thinking, there is the lotion Achin Verakin Miutin. Mara Rosh Hashanah, also the Simonius Ka Achin Verakin Shevatayer. Ach means but, Rak means only. So the Gemara says Achin Verakin. Those two words, however, only, but these are minimizers. These are reducing. These are miyutin. By contrast, the word gam, also, and even the word s, 
is inclusive. And indeed, everyone's familiar where the story of Shimon Hoem Sunni, who would extrapolate, expound on each S in the Torah. S like means something more. For example, I'm just adding, where it talks about Tevila. So, so, so basore means that the skin has to be under the water. As basore, to include the hair. So S is to include gum also, for sure means to include. So, so the Gemara, says the Gemara in the future, Gemara in Medrash tells us that achin v'rakin mi'utin, esin v'gamin ribuin. Therefore, this statement, which is in here in the brackets on the screen, ki achin v'gamin mi'utin, struck me as it doesn't seem correct. Also, what I found remarkable, you have a Hebrew phrase, Sheves Achim Gam Yochad, and there the word Ach means brothers, and spelt with a Ches. In the this brackets, Achim Vegamin seems to be taking the word Achim, which means however, with a Chof, and comparing it to the word Achim with a Ches, which is totally different words. So that these are two things which which uh, struck me, and I was puzzled by this further. And here's there's a horror of the Rebbe. Now, as I've just flipped the screen, and this is in the volume of Teres Menachem, volume I in base, at the beginning, we've got three or four um, samples of Memorium um, Osichus within that volume, where the Rebbe had added uh, had uh, added some comments. So there's it's Bilti Muga. It didn't come out fully edited by the Rebbe, but there was some kind of written exchange with the Rebbe. And here they're showing how it's, it's fascinating to see how they asked this question. They didn't understand what the Rebbe had said in the Mimer, and the Rebbe has got all these squiggles uh, to include more and more references. So I want to go back. So this is the editors of the Sikhus took these, uh, these, the, these comments of the Rebbe uh, as challenging as they look, and they did manage to work them out. And that's the note which we have now at the bottom of the page. So the first thing the Rebbe says, Indeed, the Rebbe concedes that he used the word Achin Vegamin as a play on words because it sounds similar to the word Achim Gam in the Pasuk, Shevaz Achim Gam Yochat. So because you have this various places in the Torah where, let's say, Moshe was told to make a serpent, he made it of Selech Sorov, a Simo Anis, and he made a copper one because he made a Nochosh out of Nochoshes. So not Loshen, therefore a Loshen. So Nochosh, he was told to make a Sorov, which is a type of Nochosh, and then he made it out of copper because it's a, sim, a similar sounding word. So it's legitimate on that level to use the word Achim de Gamin, um, inspired by Achim Gam Yochat. Then that's on one level. Now to understand how to say, how do you say that the word Gam, which means also, is a mute to reduce and to exclude? So here the Rebbe continues to comment. The word gam is also referred to not it's not it's not solely to include, but it also is excluding. Because when you say, oh, this also, which means why do you have to mention this also? Because if I wouldn't have said also, you would have said it doesn't belong here. So that's what it says. So therefore, the, the word gam has got kind of concealed behind it a suggestion to exclude. Because there would have been a svara to exclude, therefore you need to have a special limb to include. And in our context, it's a lower level of olam or olmas and therefore that needs a greater special effort to bring from higher to, to biya. It gives us a reference to the Kodotera, 
on the word gam and also that the filo gam where you can see this idea that gam means to include something extra which you wouldn't have thought otherwise he gives us a reference to brochas daf nun from a, say from a base the whole context of dreams there and it says if a person dreams of a, sees a camel so then he should anticipate salvation and brings the pasuk of Anoichi Ga'alcho Gam Oloi. Hashem says to Yaakov, I will bring you out from its ride. Gam Oloi, which you say it quickly, it sounds like Gam Oloi, that sounds like it's camel. And okay, so we have here another source of the word Gam, where it would, it would have otherwise predictably have gone differently. And Gam is to say that that's going to turn the course of events. Um, despite the natural mute, which would have been the uh, trajectory. Finally, the Rebbe refers to Imarat's Chayis to Daf to Sukkot Daf Memchesam and Aleph. So that's this, and the you can see here how the Rebbe added each comment one after the other. So Marat's Chayis, he was a Rav in Lvov, if I'm not mistaken, brilliant person, and he in the Gemara Sukkot there talks about. That the word ach someach, vayisa ach someach, should be, however, you should be happy. You should say that this special simcha in the last days of Yom Tov. So the question is, how can you say ach someach le rabbis? Because ach, as we said, is to exclude. It means but, however, how can you say ach someach? So he quotes from the Vilna Goran to say that the beginning of Sukkot, the Torah says to rejoice, you should have a fort, the uh, lulav and the esrog, etc. And osmach terem lefnei Hashem lekechem, you'll re rejoice. So you're rejoicing before Hashem with the lulav and the esrog, etc. So therefore, when it comes to the end of Sukkot, when you don't have those elements to, to, to rejoice with, so you might have thought. That you shouldn't be rejoicing so much. Although there's despite the fact that you don't have those special items, nevertheless you should be happy. Okay. Let's move on. Meanwhile, I found this a fascinating the whole the whole um, development of how this aura comes about. Um, obviously with a deeper meaning. So I found that. It's certainly worthwhile sharing this idea as I started off as saying how every word is is takavona, uh, there's a background to it, an explanation for it. And that's part of the appreciation of, of Torah. That every word in Torah has got a Ktusha and, and Kavona. And if we don't understand, okay, in Reiko we can, but we should try. So now I've mentioned this last week. Where's Hashem with pushing for the dedications for which we able to print this Sidra Ben Azokhin in three volumes? Meanwhile, I want to share with you uh, a study which is actually um, included in this forthcoming Sidra, and that was relating to last week's Shabbos. So now, last week's Shabbos was Shabbos Bevochim and Sivan. And what would be if on Shabbos Mevorchem Sivan there is a bris? So let's go through this carefully. This is on the first part of the screen we have Matreves Shekhanaruch, where it, it mentions the minuk to say of Harachamim on Shabbos. Then, unless it's a day where you otherwise would not say Tachnum. Then he says, there are those who have a minig not to say um, of harachamim on Shabbos Mevorachim. And that's we, we, that we take, we follow that. But usually Shabbos Mevorachim, we don't say, so not, not, Shabbos Mevorachim is a little bit less of a Yom Simcha because we do say Tzit Kosra on the Shabbos Mevorachim. And nevertheless, because of the simcha of the forthcoming Rosh Chodesh, announced the Chodesh, okay, we just announced the Chodesh, so right after that, we don't go into saying Avar Achamim, which is perhaps a painful uh, remembrance. Then, continues, not 
that during Sfira, when this, although we've said Shabbos Mevorchim of Arachimim isn't said, but during Sfira, on the Shabbos Mevorchim of Iyar and Sivin, of Arachimim is said. So although Shabbos Mevorchim just took a simcha, and they say, you don't say of Arachimim, but these two Shabbos Mevorchim, there's something more. I mean, it's more important to say Avraham despite the Simcha of Shabbos Mevorachim. Why is that? Because of the, the uh, this is referring to the Crusades and the the uh, ravaging the Jewish communities, particularly the communities with spare mines and worms were uh, massacred during this time of the year. And the, the, as we say, Avraham Kilos Koyot Hakodesh Hamosru Nafshim Had Mosheres Nefes, particularly is alluding to those three Kehillas. And so, because those events happen this time of the year, therefore, uh, the Avraham is said, even though it's a Shabbos Mivorach. Because it's so important to say Avraham at these times, therefore, there's a the next comment. That even if there's one of those Shabbosis, Shabbos Mavochim, Iyor Osivan, even if there's a bris, but nevertheless, Avrachimim is said. So even though there's two elements of Simcha, it's Shabbos Mavochim, and there's a bris, and still, because of the importance, the significance of the events, the destruction of those communities that happen at this time of the year, so the Yav Harachimim, which is to commemorate, overrides, overrides the, even two Simchas. That is the way that it's presented in the Altar of the We then go to the quote from the Siddur as it's brought down. Altar of Siddur. Starts off, Yav Harachimim Eimim Bechol Shabbos. So he brings this minig of saying, Yav Harachim every Shabbos, broadly speaking, throughout the year, Interesting Lushen, that it's not said on Shabbos Mavochim, and perhaps certainly when there's a day when Tachnun is omitted, so for sure Avarachim is not said. Okay. Perhaps Zayv Ein Sachloim or Zayv, however you read it. Then he adds, Although we have said that Shabbos Mevorchim or Achim isn't said, but there's a Shabbos Mevorchim Rosh Chodesh Sivan where it is said. Now, you could read this to say that when you don't say Tachanun, you don't say Avarachim. However, and that includes the Bris, however, if it's Rosh Chodesh Sivan, Mevorchim Rosh Chodesh Sivan, even if there is a name in Mosul because it's a bris, but still it is said. That's how you can read. Yeah? So now then we have here and the third part, the third quote on the screen is from the back of the early uh, edition of Kahas of the Altar of the Shukhanor, which was published around Toshin around 1965. And is quoting this piece from the Altar of Shukhanoruch, that of Harachamim is said on Shabbos Mavorchim, Iyor and Sivan. Says, comments, but in the Siddha, it says, Shabbos Mavorchim, Sivan, it isn't said. So it is said. Which the implication is that Shabbos Mavorchim, Iyor, it isn't said. And the reason may be because of it being humaneness. So, what's happening over here is Shabbos Mavorchim Iyor. That is the time of, of the programs, etc. But it's got two elements of simple. It's Shabbos Mavorchim. On top of it, it's humaneness. We don't say So, we've got two elements of simple. And therefore, it is said. Okay, so now if you say that Shabbos Mevorchim Simcha with Nisan Simcha 
is, you do say, over Achimim. Well, then I can take the same thing and say, Shabbos Mavorchim Sivan. And the bris. Also, you should say, you, 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 should, you should skip over, um, over Rachamim because you've got two elements together. So a regular Shabbos Mavorchim Sivan, it's just one element of Simchim. Okay, then, then over Rachamim prevails. You've got two elements come together, shouldn't say it. That's how you can learn shot. So again, as you read the Alter Rebbe Siddha, you can, it looks like, don't say Tachman, don't say Avarachim, but Shabbos and Vorchen Sivan, regardless of it being a day you don't say Tachman, you still say it. That's how you can read it. But the way it's presented in the, in, in he, he, here, just like Nissen with Shabbos and Vorchen overrides, so to Mila with Shabbos and Vorchen should over, uh, override, and not say to Avarachim. Now, then there's a reference to here. This is going to be, there, there's a ref, reference to the Prima Godim, Arachim Sof Simerish Pedalid, Base Aleph Vov Aleph. The way it's written here means Be'ifen Achet. And you look at the Prima Godim and he talks about even if there's Tartilitivusa, you've got even a Bris and Shabzavachim, you still say Avarachim. And it says, even it's closer to Tivos, they still say of Arachnim, something on those lines. So if you've read that the conclusion would be that you should, that Milo with Shabbat Mavochim say, come together, to say, and they, the two, two Simchas say, you don't say of Arachnim, well, Prim God says, you do. And he says, two Lativos, three Lativos, so you still say of Arachnim. Now, what's fascinating is that about 10 years ago, nine years ago, the, the manuscript of the Rebbe's writing of this, this, this comment over here was published on, in a family simch, in uh, Feldman's uh, family, Hassan Tshur. And this Russia Tafis, at the end of the Rebbe's comment, instead of base Aleph, Vov Aleph, it says base Aleph, Aleph. Base Aleph Aleph stands for Be'eshel Avraham, which means that Rebbe is not saying that Prime Minister God says anything different to what he said. On the contrary, he is saying, you want to understand what I've said, look up the Prime God in Be'eshel Avraham. And he's saying, therefore, just like Michelin, he's saying that 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 uh, it doesn't matter. You still say Avraham because it's so important to say Avraham at the time of the year. So even the Zabriz, together with Shabbos Mavochim, Seven, you still say over So by just that vol, whether it's read be or or has changed the meaning of this or of the Rebbe. And if I'm not mistaken, the conclusion would be that indeed that over is said because of the uh, This is just one uh, item which is written out at length in the Siddur which will, Bez Hashem, be published as soon as we get the sponsorships coming through, and Bez Hashem will be able to print it. Uh, as we say, Okay. So now, someone asked me on Friday about a children's group where they give out the children on Shabbos for davening, and they give out tokens to the children, and then the children can take these tokens and quote unquote buy a packet of bisley, a, a drink, whatever, some kind of nush, with the amount of tokens which they're having, then go, go and get these various prizes. So, is it legitimate to do that on Shabbos? So what I'm seeing here is that I'm in, this is from the Shmir Shabbos Kolchosa. He talks about children's groups for say Tilim, learning groups on Shabbos. You can give them tickets for a raffle, which will happen after Shabbos. So you can't do a raffle on Shabbos. That's clear in Shulchan Aruch. You cannot do a raffle on Shabbos. Even the raffle is for food. You cannot do a raffle on Shabbos. So to give out kids uh, cards. So they should be able to join the raffle after Shabbos. That's okay. And he prefers, says it's it shouldn't there shouldn't be any writing 
sorry, any any number of how many units they have, have earned with this to token. If you want to give different value tokens, you can give different colors. But you shouldn't have a, a figure on it worth 10 pence, 20 pence, whatever. Okay, so you're allowed to give out cards for a Hagrola, which will have a lot of shops. In another quote from the Fumus Shabbos Yochosa, in another chapter, he talks about that you can, uh, let's say, if I have a restaurant which is open on Shabbos, but obviously from Eden, would be people want to come in and have various foods. So then they can buy vouchers before Shabbos. And then on Shabbos, they'll give a voucher for chont and a voucher for uh, fish, whatever it may be, whatever they want, whatever level. So that's okay. They give vouchers and get, again here, the vouchers have no price written on them. That's not allowed. To go to give prepaid vouchers at the value of five pounds, ten pounds, whatever. And therefore you can get according to your value value, that's basically creating another type of money and you're trading on Shabbos. That would not be okay. So I'm looking at these two points together. Giving out tickets to the kids is okay. Using tickets which do not say anything about money to um if they got them before Shabbos. To get the to get the things on Shabbos, that would be okay. Here I'm a bit more concerned when the two things have come together. They're giving out the tickets on Shabbos and they are redeeming them on Shabbos. Um, all right, if there would not be any any numbers, then I think that would be more straightforward. But if they are accumulating numbers and with this they've got enough to get this to get that, that I, I, I believe is problematic. If it would just would would just be a green gets you a drink, and a blue gets you a, a, a busily, etc. I think that would be okay. But if it's if they are able to accumulate a number of tokens, that sound, looks far too similar to to business, and I don't think that's okay. Um, I might be wrong, and uh, I'll be I'll be happy to be proven wrong. I'm always happy to find, to make life easier for Eden, to be able to, especially Mechanchim, Mechanach children, to enjoy coming to Shul and davening. Okay, so here we have the following. Is it okay? We have a situation where there's a, a Beis Chabad, a Shul, and in order to enter there, you need to have a, a fob. This fob is like a looks like a credit card. It's got some kind of data or message on it, and then you swipe it, and then let's it, it allows you to come in. Of course, you would not from you would not use that on Shabbos. So the question is, well, we've got actually this shul to have a person who isn't Jewish in the process of conversion. And meanwhile, that person is happy to be the Shabbos going to... to the question is as far as is in, in relation to Muksa for a moment. Is it permitted for any Shemit Shabbos to pick up that card and give it to the Goy to open the door? And it's a very, very interesting question because... There a, a a tool which is dedicated, designated, designed for a malacha, for an ave, for if something forbidden on Shabbos, may not be moved on Shabbos as muksa, but you are allowed to move it as If you need the space, or if you need it as particular shape for a particular function, you are allowed to. So, my example is, if I want to wedge the door open happens to be that a screwdriver serves as a wedge. So I'm allowed to take a screwdriver to wedge a door open? And the answer is yes. That's called moving Lutzeurich Gufoy. It happens to be a suited shape for this purpose of, of wedging a door open. I'm allowed to do that on Shabbos. So, it's, so a, a screwdriver is less muksa than a packet of flour. Packet of flowers called Muxa Machmas Gufoy. 
because it's a commodity, it's not a keli. A screwdriver is more, uh, is less muksa, more usable than Shabbos, because it's a keli. It's not a total muksa. Now the question is, I'm, I'm, I am allowed to move the, I am allowed to move the screwdriver if I wanted to use it as a wedge, that's okay. Here, the question is, it's the tzorich, the tzorich gufo, but it's giving it to a goy to do something which I'm not allowed to do. So am I allowed to handle this this card, this fob, and I want to use it as a paper, uh, how do you say, uh, a bookmark, I'd be allowed to. But am I allowed to pick it up to give it to the goy to swipe the door? So there's something which I was struggling with, and someone pointed out to me that in the Alter Rebbe Shukhanoruch, it's pretty much implicit that it's not allowed. And that is that the Alter Rebbe, in, if in Simen Shin Ches is the prim, my primary simon about Muksa. So in Shimon Shin Ches, Sif Lamed Gimel, but it's Sif Lamed Beis, Sorry. So the Alter Rebbe talks about a candle. Now, just to clarify, in Hilchas Muksa, there's a huge difference between a keili, a tool, a piece of equipment, although it's dedicated for Malacha, and on the other side, a commodity, which is not a keili. So I mentioned flour, paint, sand, stones. These are all not kalim. So the, those those are called muksa Um A, a keli, a, a piece of equipment, isn't muksa gamer. So therefore, you are allowed to improvise with it. It's not a total muksa. You're allowed to improvise, and let's say you want to use a screwdriver to wedge a door open, that's permitted. But here, I'm coming back here, you don't want to use it in a permitted way. You want to give it to the goy, and he will use it in a forbidden way for your needs. To you, for you should be able to get him to show. So that's, it's not so clear. But here it looks like, oh, sorry, coming back to the candles. So with the candles, the Alter Rebbe says that a candle is a keili. A candle isn't a commodity. Interesting, because a candle, you know, it burns out. It's like fuel. But yet the Alter Rebbe looks at a candle as a keili. And as a result, you're allowed to move a candle if you needed the space. If you want to sit down with the candle on, the, on, on your seat, you're allowed to pick up the candle and put it, put it away. away. Says the Alter Rebbe, O Mikan Amen. From here came out the mistake of the less lettered people, Shemitaltal in their Sholem, that they feel um, permitted to can to move to, to carry in the house yeah? a, a, a candle. It's so why they can, and they're moving it when for Motzah Shabbos, so life Motzah Shabbos. Or they're moving a candle on Shabbos because it's not really muksa, yeah. If I wanted to use it as a as a uh, permitted thing, I'd be allowed to. So now they'd say, oh, I wonder, it's very permitted. I'm moving it for Motzah Shabbos. I'm moving it for a going. We should use it for himself. And the Alter says, that's not okay. Because that which we've said, you're allowed to move a Kalishim Lachal Isl Tzayat Gufai, means Keshet Sorich Yisroel Lishtamesh Bay, when the Jew has need to use it, Beshabes Atzmo, on the day of Shabbos, Eze Tash Mishamuta. There's fair various criterion here. One is that it is for use by a yid on Shabbos for a permitted activity. And therefore, to give it to a goy doesn't count. To use it for a Shabbos doesn't count. It has to be, like I said, taking the screwdriver to wish the door open on Shabbos. That would be okay. But if, it, if it's for a... Okay. So now, but I want the door open. I need the door open. So it is a tzairach. It is a tzairach Yisroel. And that's 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 the dilemma. Now here we have I say for Kotaira Shmuel who addresses this. What would happen 
if the goy wants to use your screwdriver to wedge your door open. That would be okay. Of course, if he wants to borrow your screwdriver for him to screw screws, he wouldn't be allowed to move. He looks it. Then he says further. Um, if you wanted to ask a goy to do something on Shabbos, which you're not allowed to, you are, but you are allowed to ask a goy to do it, nevertheless, it's posh at the Oslo Tautel and the It's posh that you're not allowed to hand it to the guy. So, when we have in the bottom, we have a note from the Shemitah Shabbos Gokhos, so further about this. Let me just suggest something. There's always this question, when there is a heter, is it Dechuya or Hutra? Is it a total heter, or is it that the need overrides the uh, concession? The need justifies the concession. It's really a concession. So, I mentioned by using a screwdriver to, to wedge a door open. How about if you have a, a uh, you have a, a, a kosher alternative, you have a, a non muks alternative. You could put a, a chair in the way. You could um, use a spoon. You could use a wedge. I have a wedge. So are you allowed to use a screwdriver when you could have used a wedge? So the Mishnah Barura says, no, you shouldn't. It's only when you don't have a non muksa alternative, then you're allowed to use a semi muksa keili for that purpose. But Chaim Noah disagrees with the Mishnah Barura. The Alta Rebbe doesn't mention such a thing. And then the debate goes on. And according to the, that view, you are allowed to move a, use a screwdriver to wedge your door open, even if you have a non muksa total non muksa alternative. So we're going to use the, the labels of the chuya hutra. Mr. Vru is seeing the tzorich gufa as as the chuya. Okay, you have a need. Okay, we allow you to use a screwdriver to move the screwdriver for it to provide your need. Whereas the other view is. To say hutra, no, it's not muksa. It's you are allowed to move it because it's not muksa. Now, possibly, according to the view of the Mishtavura, it's stronger. It's it's more arguable. The argument could be stronger that it's the need which justifies the movement. So, what's the difference with I need the I, I need to use the card for as a paper, as, as a bookmark, or I need the card to be able to get into shul. Happens to be that it's going to have to go through a goy. If you see it, it's my need. This is my need. This is my need. It should be justified. Whereas the other of her viewers say, no, it's hutra. It's, it's not muksa for improvised use. So to use a screwdriver. To wedge the door open was now well, it, it, it's, it's mutter. Okay, but then that because I'm saying it's hutra, on the other hand, it doesn't spread over to allow you to give it to a goy because at a malaches isur, it's not in, in also the word is also the tzorich gufa means to improvise. I'm taking a hammer to crack a nut. You don't buy hammers. Hammers are not made, not come manufactured crack nuts. So you're improvising. You t and in this case, you're using a, if you use the card as a bookmark, it's not what it's made for. You're, you're improvising. But if you're using the card to open the door to to to, to, and to deactivate or activate a magnet, that's what it's made for. That's that's not a, not a improvising. That's using it for its for its function, which that isn't that isn't permitted. One last thing, and that is that I was asked to revisit or just repeat something we discussed last year about having an early meal on the second day of Shavuos, second evening of Shavuos, sorry. So, because, especially if it's a leap year, Shavuos is uh, night, nightfall is very late. And so the question is of having the meal earlier, and downing my so, all right, Chabad, Generally, try not to dive, dive my earlier, but if, let's say that's that's what dive my earlier, 
having the meal earlier. So there is legit in, in, in the Sivir Mr. Ashlechus, volume one, addressed that and brought a source from the Benish Chai, from Baraf for Olim, that it's okay if necessary to have your second night Yom Tov meal to have it earlier. It doesn't have to wait till Mamesh Nach. It by means that Dova Haposhot, that there's no sense of if you're eating your meal at eight o'clock, there's no sense at 10.35, whatever the time is, on the on the candle, on, on the luach, you're going to light candles at 10.35 when you're all just about to get into pajamas. That's not what the Tachron of Adlokas Neus is. Therefore, if you're having your meal early, so then you should be doing Adlokas Neus before the meal starts. You're not, you're not diminishing the Yom Tov. By starting Yom Tov Sheni early, it's still Yom Tov, and so I don't see any down factor. The other side I want to say is about our Shul calendar. That when when it comes to Ma'ariv throughout the week, we follow the Alter Rebbe Zman, which is sometimes 20, 10, 20 minutes earlier than. There's a man which is the the, the, luach, the, the local luchas, and let's say the altar of man is when the sun is about six degrees beneath the horizon, and the general Motzah Shabbos is uh, follow and when the sun is um, it's eight and a half degrees beneath the horizon. So that's so what we've done is for Maidi we're following the altar of man, for Motzah Shabbos we've been sticking to the shtotz man as it's known. So now, um, when it comes to the second night of Yom Tov, so what time are we going to write on the Luach, Bar So we're going to have to write the same time similar to Motzah Shabbos, and we're going to, we're going to have a latest man. So now, we have the, and here comes the anomaly. The men in Shul say, a whole week we've been downing at 10 o'clock, so why should we wait till uh, another 15 minutes? So they want to daven my at 10 o'clock. The women are following the candle, the, the calendar, where it says you can't light the candles before 10.35. So then, okay, so you've got the, the, the men are going to daven my early, or not early, early, on the Alter Rebbe's man. They're going to come home, it's going to be just about the time of Lichtenen. So then, well, nothing's ready, because you can't get ready, you can't prepare anything in advance. So it's just frustrating. Uh, it doesn't contribute to Sean bias. Unless the men really are going to roll up their sleeves and start um, preparing everything for the meal right there and then. Because normally you come home, everything is ready. So because of this, we've been uh, keeping on the second night of Yom Tov, we've been keeping the latest man, um, despite that we could have done it earlier, but for the man Hashalom, we've been uh, keeping to the latest man. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's cheer. And I wish you all a good Shabbos, a good Yom Tov, a Bolas Hatayra, a Simcha, a Pnimius, or should hear a Surah Tavis, if she hear from the hostages, and a Gaula Shlemo, with Moshiach Tetkaino, with Mheir Yomain the Mamish, we should celebrate Shavuos with Moshiach Tetkaino in Vais Hashlishi, Shivana, with Mheir Yomain the Mamish. Okay.